Last time on Ghost of Tsushima. If it's not too bold for me to say, you should be as proud as I am. You built this house too, there. Supporting the roof, that beam came from you. You can't see the hides, but they are there, beneath the thatch. And that corner there, that stays standing because of the metal you found. Believe me, I tried without. Set me back a week. You once told me you never built anything. Now you can say you have. And with this house, I can build a new family, like the one I never had. Thank you. When I saw home burn, it was here on Iki. I did nothing then. This house won't make up for it, but it's a start. Hola amigos, ghost here, and today we continue the story of the ghost. We have collected all of the Sakai banners and earned all of the unique versions of the Hosama. We have helped a young man build a new home to start a new life, a new family. We also collected several records of Iki, giving us due insight of the people of Iki and of the Eagle. Now we finish collecting all of the secrets of the island of Iki. Let's do this! The first thing that we're going to be doing for today's chapter is the final three haikus. Reflect on regret. Waters dancing down. Spring begets new life. Flowers somehow bloom. I'll say this one. Crushing stone into pebbles. Broken by unyielding stone. A summit looms too distant. I'm gonna do that one. Streams never flow back. We bear what follows. The past weighs on us. Spring begets new life. A summit looms too distant. The past weighs on us. man and you still can barely sit still I was not expecting a hallucination right there a very fascinating one in the in fact I, w I wonder why specifically Jin hallucinated her in that moment but anyway headband of regret spring begets new life a summit looms too distant the past weighs on us. Let's take a look. Ooh. I like the color scheme. And I do like that it covers one eye. Kind of like a... Uh, I won't say a pirate, but like... If you, if Jin somehow lost an eye or whatever, it, it's kind of like that. It, it looks cool. Either way. I don't know if it would fit the ghost armor, but I think it can fit probably a Ronin set of some kind. But it looks good nonetheless. And there we go. On to the next haiku, we go. Reflect on solace. Weeping rivulets. Wind through a dead tree. Unreachable sky. Bedrock laid bare to the sun. Ribbons suffocate boulders. 
Moss clings to a home too harsh. Yet a quiet calm. Till peace comes at last. The roar and embrace. I will say this. Unreachable sky. Bedrock laid bare to the sun. Yet a quiet calm. I was expecting another hallucination, but we didn't get one. Headband of solace, unreachable sky, bedrock laid bare to the sun, yet a quiet calm. Ooh, I like this. For the fact that it looks like uh, one of those old school paintings. It, it's pretty cool. I like the blossom trees all over it. It's, it is, it is top tier, a top tier headband. Not sure what kind of uh, build you would put it with just to, so it can match with other stuff but it is a very good headband in my opinion and there we go time for the final haiku reflect on acceptance a head of spears shifts a rock spies on high Leaves whisper nearby. I'm gonna do this one. A good friend lost to grazing. White buds shimmering exposed. A forest open to all. I'm gonna do this one. The vine wilts, but lives. Sunsets lead to dawn. Oh, I see. While the cat lounges. Uh, I'll just do this one. Leaves whisper nearby. White buds shimmering, exposed. Sunsets lead to dawn. And there we go. All the haikus have been completed. And let's see what this reward is. Headband of acceptance. Leaves whisper nearby. White buds shimmering exposed. Sunsets lay lead to dawn. Another another one I I like because of its unique design with uh, it looks like fan yeah those uh type of fans that that are on the headband are pretty cool and different and unique. Not sure what armor you would put it with just to have it match with the rest, but it's definitely good. Not as good as the other one. I like the other one a little bit more, but this one's also pretty decent. And with that, all the haikus have been completed. All of the ones of Tsushima, and now all the ones of Iki. All in a day's work, I say. Next up on our list is to complete the final three pillars of honor. The Stone Cutter. Humble, but more powerful than a prince. I like him. I already can just for the white sheath alone because it just it's unique because it's not full on white you can see that it has a wear and tear and it looks like it's a painted piece of wood plus the handle is pretty unique as well and with the uh very end of the hilt and everything it is pretty cool not gonna lie uh, <laughs> it, it is good it is really good immortal hope it still carries the scent of wisteria, 
that live for lifetimes. Let's take a look. Ooh. I like it for a similar reason. The uh, wooden handle is pretty cool. But this time around, I actually like the thing that is uh, tied around the sheath. I The cloth, I'm not sure what it's actually called, but I think it contrasts very well with the uh, sheath itself. It is pretty nice looking. And the hilts themselves, the hilt and the uh, handle itself is also pretty nice. Another solid sword kit, in my opinion. The Saya is so valuable. Even this monkey likes it. You want that? Or would a tune suffice? Was I expecting that to occur? Thank you, little one. This is of more use to my blade than to you. Indeed. I honestly forgot that was uh, what happens with this very specific pillar of honor, which is actually the final one. Nekoma's Fang. Any who wake Nekoma will face her fang. Top tier. Top tier for the color scheme alone. I am a sucker for white, gold, gold, and black combined together. It is a this is an amazing set of swords, or sword kit. The sword kit is just amazing, and the little red like uh, belt sheath, not sheath, um, cloth that's tied around it is. It works very well since it's not the type of red or other color that would. Um, go against it. It actually matches really well. And also, I think there's a little bit of yellowish gold on the um, stuff as well, which also matches. Either way, top tier sword kit, in my opinion. Very much so. Next up on our list are the four wind shrines. The winds of Iki hide mysterious treasures. If we take a look at the map, we can find all four. The first one here, Shrine in Shadow. The next one, Bloodstained Shrine, up here, Forbidden Shrine, and finally, Shrine of Ash. Each one of these shrines, once we will do them, and you will see, understand soon, visually at least, that these are all references to other Sony exclusive games. One being God of War, another being Forbidden West, uh, a third being Shadow of the Colossus, and the fourth, I'm trying to remember. I think it's um, Bloodborne, is the fourth is the fourth one as well. So there are four in total, and I don't think you have to own any of the games to have these unlock. I think three of them are naturally given to you. This fourth one, if I remember correctly, you actually did at one point have to own um, Forbidden West so that you can actually collect the reward. I think, don't quote me on that, I just remember one time when I played this, I didn't have access to that one shrine, but then after I had uh, got it in Forbidden West, I was able to access the shrine, so it might be linked to that, but at least three of them, the Bloodstained Shrine, the Shrine in Shadow, and the Shrine of Ash were, uh, are naturally unlocked for you, you don't have to buy any other game, but this one, I think the Forbidden Shrine, you had to have got the uh, Forbidden West, but like I said, don't quote me, I'm not sure if that's 100% true, it may have been, it may have changed over time as the game got updated and such, but anyway, now it is time for us to go to each of these shrines and do very unique and specific things to unlock the shrines, like wearing certain armor, doing very specific moves or techniques, unsheathing swords or whatever. And you will see, you will all see that in one moment. The first one that we're going to be doing is the Shrine in Shadow, a forgotten shrine 
The meaning of this shrine has been lost to memory. A clue left behind may speak to its purpose. Let us go. Tanka, hidden in shadow. Stone knows no season, nor the colossus that was failed to save one soul. Wanderer, come like through mist, a ghost casting no shadow. And what we gotta do for this specific shrine is wear the ghost armor and then. Oop, wrong thing. Throw a smoke bomb. Mask of the Colossus, face of stone, unyielding. Armor of the Colossus, wrapped in the strength of a forbidden land. Can you take a look? This is the what you get. The it's a reference to, as I said, Shadow of Colossus. Uh, one of the Colossus, I think. I'm not sure which one. I don't remember. It's been a very long time. But it is pretty cool. It is probably a very cool, one of the best of the four, just because of the detailing alone, on like the jacket and the mask itself. Now let's actually take a look in journal, or in gear wise, so we can see a more contrast with the white background. And there, as you can see, it is pretty cool. Not gonna lie, I am a sucker for it because it has a mix of gold, bronze, a little bit of green and white. And even black, like it combines these colors pretty nicely to make a solid, a solid uh, mask and uh, mask and uh, armor color set. Yeah, that's the best words I'm gonna say. But yeah, it is pretty cool. It is, it is one of the best. The next shrine that we'll be doing is the Blood Stain Shrine, the one that is a reference to Bloodborne. And basically, what you gotta do is wear the Kensei armor. And then heal yourself. So, let's head that way. And let's read the scroll first. Blood stained Tanka, the first green of spring, sickens to black, decaying. Plagued by blood and beast, hunter, reject death's allure, prepare to duel man's fertility. Or frailty. I think it's actually how you pronounce that. Frailty. But yeah, all we gotta do is heal ourselves. And the, way, and the way for this to work, we just have to jump down right here. Injure ourselves. And heal. Yar Yarnam Helm, a straw hat of a Ronin from a world of blood. And Yarnam Vestments, armor adorned with feathers plucked from the last great hunter. Now let's take a look in this screen. It is pretty cool, in my opinion. You can see that there's blood naturally on the armor all over the place. Another little subtle reference because you get you bleed a lot in the game and everything. But I do like the very much black it is. I think it is more black than the Dark Promise one. Yeah, it's even more dark. And it is pretty cool. It's a pretty cool set. It's not my favorite of the four. It, but it is solid. It is probably one of the best sets for the Kensei armor itself. Some of the others are not as uh, vibrant, I guess. No, not vibrant. What's the word? Not as detailed in the sense of like having blood stains, having thick feathers among the uh, straw and everything that is on it. it. What I'm trying to say is probably one of the best versions of the Kensei armor in my opinion and it's pretty cool. A uh, pretty cool reward if you figure out how to do that shrine properly. I even like the little feather on top of the hat. Or well, actually it's, I think it's two or three feathers right there. It's pretty cool. Either way, it, top tier. Next up, we're going to be doing the Forbidden Shrine, 
the reference to Forbidden West. And what you gotta do is wear Tadadori's armor, and then you're gonna have to do something specifically, but first, let's read the scroll. A Seeker's Tanka. The old world is gone, though life is never ending. Focus your spirit. Take up the archer's mantle. A seeker must aim for truth. And basically, what we gotta do is do that. And bam, we strike that. Come over here. Strike that. And strike that. Sign of the Hunter. A hunter never fears to stalk through forbidden lands, nor face unknown foes. Seeker's Attire. Worn by those who boldly seek the truth no matter the cost. And if we take a look, and here it is. And I gotta say, it's probably either my third or second favorite of the four. Mostly because not only does a reference obviously fit Forbidden uh, West's main character and her design, along with some of the other characters' designs, but I don't know, I just have, if I get a little bit sense of Native American, indigenous type stuff with it, as it is just, I don't know, it's something about it that I find very fascinating, naturally, because... Of just how it's composed a little bit of extra modern uh, futuristic technology on the headband and the knee pad right there but the rest of it being a mix of like Eskimo of Native American of other tribal type of wear hell I'm pretty sure some of it could be referencing Mongolian if you think about it for long enough or look at it but either, obviously it's mostly a reference to the main character of Forbidden West's attire or her main attire at least either way it is very cool and unique how they were able to put it together and also keep it a little bit samurai-ish like how we have the uh, samurai armor around the waist and going down the legs, how we still have the sort of fluffy arm that of the irregular version of the armor, as you can see. It, and it's, it's just, yeah. <laughs> Basically, that's all I gotta say, because it is, it is a very good p piece of armor. Or a skin for the armor, I would say. Top tier, again. Very much top tier. Finally, we have the Shrine of Ash. The reference to God of War. Specifically, 2018's God of War. And you can already see <laughs> the uh, handprint with the axe already. Tanka covered in ash. In fall, a tree fruits which grows from seed to sapling. A stranger and son. Boy, honor your father's fight. Show him the strength of your blade. And of course, the way that we what we have to do is wear the Sakai armor, and then draw our sheath or blade. I mean, helm of war, forged in fire and blood, Spartan. Grim visage for a warrior's soul. Ghost of Sparta, blessed by a god of war. And let's take a look. This right here, of the four unique armors or unique armor skins that we get, is my favorite because of just how detailed it is compared to the other. Well, they're all very much detailed in their own ways, but just. How much they were able to make it sim their own, adding the horns to the helmet like that, adding the gold color scheme to, to the chains and to very specific pieces of the armor. How they were able to uh, uh, stylize Kratos' uh, tattoos on the helmet, the shoulder, and the chest plate. How there's mo even more chains around his, uh, his uh, katana. And his other arm, obviously. Uh, I like I like how the uh, skirt is still Japanese-like, 
but it has somewhat references to that of Kratos' uh, original skirt slash uh, kilt that he kind of wore, and it it just looks so good. It is definitely my favorite of them all. It is just it's just beautiful to look at. I think my second favorite would go to the Colossus armor because of how great it looks. Third, I think I will give the Forbidden West, and then fourth being the Bloodborne armor. Granted, just because I rank them in that way does not mean any of the, the other ones are bad. Uh, worse. They're all freaking amazing and probably some of the best uh, color variations of the uh, existing armors, and they're just they're just amazing to look at. Like, <laughs> you can't tell me this doesn't look amazing right here. If we even get a little bit closer look, there's the the uh, this tattoo is all on the uh, mask as well, and we can see that the teeth are actually golden, with a little bit of red around the teeth, which is actually pretty cool. And if you look at the helmet itself, it has um, it looks like Norse type symbols. I can't really tell what symbols exactly, but they definitely look like something from the first game. I'm not sure what. And we also have arrows on the top of the helmet. See, there's so many unique little details, and it's, it's freaking amazing. But like I said, all of them are pretty cool. The Forbidden West one is great. The, where is it? The Kensai, Kensei's one is pretty good. If we look over with this one, the Shadow of Colossus's one is good. They're, they're just all amazing. But I, I, I definitely do say that the, my favorite is definitely the God of War one. Because it's just... Uh, <laughs> I don't know why. I'm like I said. I think it's because I'm a sucker for gold, uh, white, and black combinations, and with that, and that's basically most of this armor. And of course, there is a bit of uh, red as well, which actually adds to it amazingly. And I think that one sh uh, sword kit that we found just recently actually probably fits with it pretty well. But yeah, there we go. We have all four wind shrines completed. There we go. Next up on our list is the final lighthouse of the game. Yahata Lighthouse. There we go. There we go. That's the last, last of the lighthouses. Just checking if there's anything hidden in here, which I assume there is. Supplies. Supplies. Oh, a record. Well, we might as well collect that in a moment. Let's see anything else around here other than this. Let's so check like this as well. Bam. Now, let us collect that record. And let's take a look. At the tap. Here lies Gozaburo. Mongols attacked. He fought. Saved me. Hurt. We ran. I blocked the door to keep us safe. He did not die alone. Tragic. Next up on our list of activities is to uncover the final nine records of Icky. To my wife, our relation should have been strong, but it has proven weak. I am happy to divorce you. I will not object to who you marry next, and I will not change my mind about that or this divorce. The Year of the Monkey, Second Month, Second Day, from Shinnosuke to Kamiguki. 
Hmm. Fascinating that we get some, despite all the other, many of the other records talking about the invasion, this one just talks about a relationship dying out. Very fascinating to have this in among all the other types of records. Kind of shows just how life was before the Mongol invasion. Because I doubt this this was written during the Mongol invasion, but very fascinating indeed. To Lord Sakai upon your return. Lord Sakai, because I know you will return to your father's fortress, I have addressed this message to you. When I first drank the medicine, it showed me the torments my people had endured for generations. My mind survived that spirit journey, but only because my teachers guided me from horror to wisdom. I vowed that my people would never be made to suffer so again, and I have kept that promise as their katan. Let me do the same for you. Heal you as I have healed all my shamans. And know this, I shall be Kadan in the east. You could be the first of your people to complete the spirit journey. You are already a dangerous hunter, a predator. Become a messenger of the eternal blue sky. Anshkar Kadan, the eagle. Another fascinating uh, record slash letter from the Eagle herself for Jin. I think this is what the third one now that we've gotten from her in some way. And it just shows how though she's evil in her own sense, she's also very much just trying to look out for her people and also other people through her religion. Granted, the murder and the genocide and everything is kind of fucked. But yeah, it's it's very fascinating her motivations more spiritual and of everything and it's, it's it's also pretty cool that this record i think appears only when you liberate for sakai it doesn't appear here until you uh, liberate it because obviously you don't have access to the force until you're liberated so that means she was expecting us at one point to liberate it which it makes sense because she already she it doesn't think she's as smart as a uh, gotan khan but at least her with her it's clear that she knew what jin was going to do and it, it just it's very fascinating to have these type of letters to the captives of katayama market to be read in japanese to all captives upon arrival at katayama market Ankunchar katan Blessed eagle of her tribe, praise for your strength and sustenance. The way of the eagle tribe is service. We are called to a purpose beyond selfish whims and desires, to shelter, to nourish, to heal, and to protect our people. You have been brought here because you refused this sacred trust, the service we owe one another. Therefore, we offer you instruction. You will learn to honor and obey as a child honors and obeys a mother. You will learn to service each other and aid to the, add to the glory of the great Mongol nation. May the eternal blue sky light your way. These are the words of the eagle, Anchar Kotan. Another fascinating letter showing just how the eagle tribe and the eagle operate during their conquests and as we've seen they torture some they force others to drink their medicine slash poison and with others they force them to do hard labor and stuff like this to get them to join the eagle tribe in one way or another it's very fascinating just to see the different methods that they use to try to bring people into the eagle tribe very fascinating stuff attached to an old crate. Take these fruits, this axe, and this advice. All this and more at Fune's refuge. Go there. Who brought you supplies when sick? Me. Who drank your sake? Me. Who fixed house in monsoon covered in mud? Us both. You owe me to try Fune's refuge. Can't protect you at home. I will try. No promises. Tenzo. 
Oh, a, a record from Tenzo himself. Interesting. Isn't it's also very interesting because the way he writes isn't as illiter as literate as you would think because he speaks pretty well. So it's interesting how he can speak pretty good, but writing wise, he's not as good, but still pretty decent. And it's also very fascinating. I wonder if this is referring to someone he knows, clearly not family, but just someone he knows personally enough to be like, go, please. It's the only be the best place to go. So very, very fascinating that we could see a little bit of perspective of Tenzo. Dirt. Even though we've already met him, we could have possibly found this before we met him. It's still a very fascinating little piece of Tenzo's character. To the raiders of Iki Island. To be read in Japanese to any raiders taken captive. Anchar Katan, messenger of the eternal blue sky and the ruler of the Eagle tribe recognizes that Iki Island has suffered at the hands of, of the arrogant samurai. These same samurai rejected our offer of friendship and forced us to protect ourselves from their cruelty. The great Mongol nation welcomes all the peoples of the earth as a mother welcomes her children. We do not spill blood in our homes. We shelter our guests. Stand with the Eagle tribe, join our fight, and end the tyranny of the samurai forever. These are the words of the eagle on Kanchar Katan. Another tactic of trying to get people to join the eagle, appealing to the raiders' belief or, ha or hatred, I mean, of the samurai because of the previous invasion. But also notice, this is low-key propaganda, but if you noticed that when it says the samurai rejected our offer of friendship and said forced us to protect ourselves from their cruelty they're claiming self-defense because of that despite being the ones invading it is very fascinating that's how they think either they know they're invading or they're like actually believe that they are fighting on the defensive by invading like a preemptive strike basically very fascinating to think about if you with how all the Eagle Tribe organizes themselves. It is very, very fascinating. Too bad. To the captives of Sentinel's Peak, to be read in Japanese to all captives upon arrival at Sentinel's Peak. Ankenshar Katan, called the Eagle by her people, offers prayer and comfort to you. We have given your guidance we have given you guidance and gifts of wisdom and chances to redeem your cowardice and bloodshed. When you were lost in the desert of night, we lit your way with a full silver moon and a clear path of white stones. But you chose instead the dark wilderness. You rejected our friendship. Now you are lost to us and to yourselves. There is nowhere else for you to go in this world. Think on your crimes as you complete the final journey to the lower world and face the judgment of your ancestors. These are the words of the eagle, Ankanchar Katan. Once more, another fascinating insight to the eagle. And once they, once a group rejects them, they basically say, well, you're fucked. You will be judged by your crimes. You're dead to us. You're going to die. You're going to face judgment of your ancestors. All that kind of stuff. It kind of show. It kind of is like go, they go mask off. It shows who they truly are. Like they act like they're going to give you all this stuff, but once you reject them, they show you the true brutality of the invaders. Very fascinating, and as well as trying to also show the spiritual blood uh, evilness that they low-key have. Like, they could pr preach all this good stuff, but at the same time, they end up saying, oh, you're not with us? Well, you're going to hell, basically, or you're going to suffer uh, spiritually because of that. So it's both a physical and a spiritual threat, which is, again, once again, just fascinating stuff. Praise to you, 
I have no beautiful words. Protect me from the Mongol eyes. Shield my mother and my wife from them. Shelter my sons and my daughters from them. Hide my harvest so we can eat. Turn your smile toward us. My faith is as hard as a diamond. I offer flowers. I offer water. Another insight, this time to the people and how they cope with the invasion. This, spe specifically with this, spiritually, asking for one of the gods of, uh, or Shinto gods of uh, Japan to help them against the Mongols, to protect them and such. It's very fascinating. Manifest. 20 copper coins split between Fune, Denzo, and me. 10 porcelain shards divide among crew. Bolt of silk sell to Sao or Subaki. Leathers divide among crew. Supplies disperse to crew. Metals mine keep from Fune. Interessante. I wonder who this is from. Obviously somebody within the crew of Fune. But why would they keep the metals away from them? Interesting. Hidden treasure. An old man told me to reach his hidden treasure before the Mongols. A game he plays on fools. Or could he, ha he have sailed with Black Hand Riku himself? Follow the coast up to the nearest watchtower. When the sun touches the horizon, follow where the shadow leads you. At water's edge, pace yourself forward five times the number of the temples and sanctuaries on Iki. Turning left, pace forward the same as before. Through the spy hole, the distant rock points the way. Interessante. So obviously, with the bland, ha uh, uh, bland hand, Black Hand Riku, uh, uh, the person that was telling the tale, or at least most of them, were just trying to get the armor for themselves while also killing making sure Riku was dead, so they were going to kill anyone who went and found the stuff. But it's very fascinating to see that there was actually multiple different ways for people to tell the story in terms of where to go, because this is very much different compared to what we were told to do when we first went to go do and complete the tale. So it's very interesting how other people may have spin the tale and the directions to something different. And granted, if we had completed, uh, if we have collected this previously, potentially maybe this could have been another alternative to find the area. I doubt it because the way it uh, remind uh, how it's structured doesn't make sense because we found we discovered it because of the water glowing and such. And this doesn't mention a, a water glowing. So, a very fascinating little record and the final record of Icky. Thus, we have completed and collected all of the records of Iki and that of Tsushima. The final thing that we'll be doing for today's chapter is collecting the final 11 vanity gear on Iki Island. Let's do this! Eye of the Explorer, what wonders it has seen. Let's take a look. Oh! I like the black and white color scheme of it. And it also has that eye patch like thing once more. It's a nice little headband. Not the best, but it's nice. Raider Jingasa hat. The war hat of foot soldiers and raiders. Let's take a look. I like it. I like it very much because of its style. It's very unique compared to most of the other helmets and things we've seen because it looks like an actual helmet helmet instead of like a mask or just some ornamental headgear. It looks like, I wouldn't say it looks like a modern day helmet, but it definitely has that similar type of feature to it. And I also like that it's covered in, I want to say either fur or um, hide or um, feathers. And then there's also some golden charm in the back, or not charm, uh, right, uh, stuff that's uh, tied to the uh, top of it, which is also pretty interesting. A nice head piece of headgear, very much so. Helm of the Lower World, 
honed on a journey through darkness. Ooh. This is definitely a Mongol helmet and face mask. Well, not face mask. I love the dash of purple. It really fits very well, and you can see the eagle wings on the helmet. This is one pretty good one. One of the, I want to say one of the best so far in terms of uh, vanity gear that you can collect from Icky Island alone. Pretty nice. It, I, I very much like it. I'm not sure if it would fit the uh, Mongol armor since the Mongol armor has a lot of green to it, naturally. So, but I think you, I could think I think you can make it work. It's like I said, pretty good. Demonic Archer's Mask, left behind by a mad, murderous master of the bow who was obsessed with the legendary archer, Yuchitsu Tsune. Let's take a look. I see. I know it's not the same mask as the guy that we fought to get the bow, but it's very much similar, and it's freaking cool as hell because of how unique it is. The long red nose that kind of looks like an eagle's beak. The furrowed brow. The amount of hair that's used for like a beard and mustaches and long uh, long eyebrows. And it even has like a technically a tiny hat that's on his forehead that could also be a horn if you want to think about it that way. And you can just see the wear and tear. Definitely one of the more unique sets of anti gear from Icky Island and it's quite fantastic for it. The Eagle's Chosen Worn by those the Eagle has chosen to make the arduous spirit journey to become one of her shamans or lose their souls in the lower world. Let's take a look. Ah, so it's for the Ronin attire. And it's sort of grayish, browny earth mix. It's nice. It definitely gives me like very monk spiritual vibe in the sense that it's very not as uh, thick as all the other robes that you get for the Ronin attire, and that it's very very much more earthly. Yeah, I could definitely see a, a disciple wearing this, and so that they can go through the journey. And then once then, then they get the armor that they are given. So. Someone's killing animals. Slain and left to rot. Utter contempt for these sacred messengers. Prowling tiger, ferocious in battle, patient in approach. Ooh, another one that has a unique uh, design to it. It's similar to some of the other ones we've seen uh, previously, but it has the ti obviously the tiger is in the front, and it looks like it's rushing through a bunch of bamboo and grass to strike whatever it may be. Obviously, it doesn't show what it's going to strike, but it's very cool that it has that design. And, of course, the greenish color of bamboo and grass behind it. It's an another nice headband, honestly. Rippling grace, leaving an impact long after travel ends. Who? Oh, it's a headband, basic oh, archer headband, basically, because it has two different targets on the headband. I like it for that reason. The co specific colors, not so much, but I do like the design. The, granted, I'm pretty yeah, I'm pretty sure it's an archer headband because of the description of it, but yeah. Nekoma's scowl, 
Whoever sees this mask knows they have awoken a tiger. A cat mask. I like it. I, I, I like the uh, silverish tone of the metal. Uh, well, I don't know if it's metal specifically of the mask itself. It'll mix with a little bit of the white. A nice mask. Not my favorite because I'm not much of a cat person per se. But it's nice nonetheless. Petals caress. The winds stir up petals on the journey. I like it. I like the color scheme. The green with the mix of yellow does match decently. Kind of reminds me of, I think, Oregon's colors. Their basketball and football team's colors. I think it's a certain type of orange and yellow. I'm not remembering at the moment, but... And I do like how the, the main design is actual flower or leaf petals just going it uh, all around the uh, headband. It's pretty nice. No. Yama Neko's eye patch. An eye patch that once belonged to the Fear Raider Captain Yama Neko. Let's take a look. Ah, it's another one of the ones that covers one eye. And of course, it is an eye patch because it does cover the eye. I do like the color scheme. A purple with white it works very well. And I do like how it has different types of. Of symbols all over it, some of which I'm pretty sure are the are the designs of coins, while others I think are designs of specific um, clan symbols because some of them very much look like they could be clan symbols. Either, obviously, a raider is not going to have clan symbols all over him, but I wonder what those symbols are actually supposed to represent. Or are they just some fancy design? Either way, looks pretty nice. And if I recall. This I this uh, vanity gear is actually uh, from that one side mission we completed not too long ago, where we were helping that one lady defeat a group of raiders that had joined the tr Eagle Tribe, and I think this guy this guy's name is the uh, as it says the captain was the leader of that group that we never saw that the lady went on the ship to kill and destroy that ship so. It's interesting that the only thing that we see of him is, of course, the headband and also his lifeless corpse that isn't given much detail. But either way, very fascinating. And the final piece of vanity gear on Nikki Island, end of all of Tsushima, of the whole game, is right here on top of one, the main temple of Cloud Forest Temple. Flight of the Dragon. Like the Dragonfly, both strong and supple, I think is how it's pronounced. Because it's not supply. Ooh. I like, the, of course, I like the black and white color scheme. That's my favorite part. And I do like the inverse that the Dragonfly is right down the center. And that the black side of it is on the white side. And it's kind of that yin and yang type symbol. But with the dragonfly. And it's very nice. I once, I don't know if I would say it's my favorite of the vanity gear. But it's definitely one of the more favorite. Just because of how simple it is. But also unique. Because it's sort of that yin yang type of thing. That I don't think we see with many of the other headbands. Or any other piece of armor. But anyway. There we go. And if we look, we have all the vanity gear of the game, as I said. I know that I said that the last thing that we were going to do for today was the vanity gear, but I decided that we should go and visit the Crimson Dye Merchant and see if there's any special uh, conversation that we have with the guy, since we haven't talked to him uh, since, well, the uh, Hidden Cove tournament. So, let us go do that. Loss and fury. A warning to some, an invitation to others. Ah, Bokto, the tournament champion. Finally came to visit. Ah, I remember you from the tournament. So, 
with the crimson dyes. You bastard me fair and square. Please, choose one of my creations as your reward. And of course, there's a bunch of different unique little sword kits and armor colors that we can buy for very specific stuff. And also because, and we also have, because we have one, we can have one uh, for free. So I think what I'm going to do is get the one for the uh, Saragami armor, the Crimson Victory. Red becomes you. Some would say you inhabit the shade. You have my thanks. Thank you, buddy. Have a good rest of your life, since we probably won't see you again. <laughs> and with that, we conclude today's chapter of the ghost story. I hope you all enjoyed the chapter. I certainly did. Until next time, this is Ghost, signing out.